on the one hand, if you're an NFL team, you always want to be picking at the tail end portion of round number one because that means you're either a championship contender or you're really, really close to it, and it means you're not that far away from ultimately winning a Lombardi trophy. On the other hand, being in that type of position, picking late in the draft, especially if you do it year after year, can become a bit challenging in and of itself because in theory, you don't have the best draft position. You miss out in the first round, especially on these so-called marquee talents, and it really puts a lot of pressure on your scouting and player personnel departments to be able to find those gems, find those guys that end up outplaying their draft position. You know, when you look at the Indianapolis Colts, this could potentially be an organization that's entering into the similar situation they had during the Peyton Manning era of the 2000s, where they're going to consistently be in the mix, and as a result, more often than not, just about every year, they're going to be picking late in the NFL draft, probably in the foreseeable future to come. So it's going to be incredibly important for this team to be able to find some gems in the middle to late rounds, be able to find those guys that can outplay their draft position. Now, did the Colts do that in this 2015 draft? Ultimately, only time will tell. Now, I know a lot of people question the Colts' selection of Philip Dorsett, the wide receiver from Miami, with the 29th overall pick. I understand it, and I get it, because you're talking about a team that was decimated by the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. They couldn't stop them. The Patriots were too physical. They were just too good on the offensive end. You know, and as a result, you know, the Colts once again looked like the Patriots bitches. So a lot of fans will sit there and say for a team that needed help on the defensive line, needed help at the edge rush position, needed help at inside backer, needed help in the secondary, especially at safety, why would you spend a first round pick on a luxury talent like a Philip Dorsett? How is this guy addressing needs and how does this really make any sense to take a guy who's five foot eight and a half? in round number one when he might best be nothing more than a slot receiver at the NFL level. I get it and I understand it and I see why a lot of people question this including perhaps some players within the Colts organization. This is a team that's really close and you're probably looking at a team and you're saying you know they have a couple of big needs and if they address those big pressing needs this is a team that could win the Super Bowl this year. Not later down the road but a team that could win the Super Bowl this year and maybe win another one or two of them down the road. However, with that said, I will say when it comes to Philip Dorsett that I do think the pick makes sense for the Colts on several different levels. Reggie Wayne is gone. Andre Johnson, yes, was brought in, but he's not a spring chicken anymore. You've got T.Y. Hilton in a contract year. You know, you yet remain to be seen whether or not Dante Moncrief is going to prove himself to be a long-term starter outside at the NFL. The point being is that Philip Dorsett does fit what the Colts do on offense, and he provides them some organizational flexibility. He also could be a guy that could have a big impact in the return game, something that the Colts could definitely use an upgrade on. And you also look at it, too, for all the talk about the Colts' defense and how they were manhandled and out-muscled and out-hustled, that Colts' offense didn't do diddly dick against the Patriots again. This is a team that also struggles to score points against the New England Patriots, and one way to be able to score points against the New England Patriots is to expose that lack of depth and, in particular, athleticism and speed in the secondary. So bringing in a guy like Dorsett does help the Colts, both offensively and, frankly, defensively. Because, again, as much as everybody wants to talk about the defense of the Colts and how bad they were against the Patriots again, and they were again, that offense was a non-factor. That Colts offense did not show up. They just didn't do enough. So that Colts defense could have played a great game and held the Patriots offense to 14, 17 points. They still would have fucking, Colts would have lost. They still would have been dominated. They had to find another weapon. Now, did it need to necessarily come in the first round in the form of Philip Dorsett? That remains to be seen. Was he necessarily the best wide receiver on the board at that point in time? For me, he wasn't. I had both Devin Smith and I believe maybe even Jalen Strong rated ahead of him. Um, but I understand the fit and I get it. I see it. Even though a lot of people will question the selection and I understand. This is where we come into that ultimate conflict. We always talk about how teams, the good teams, are supposed to take best player available and skip de skip a whoop de whoop. But when the team arguably makes a selection that is best player available, we knock them um, as an NFL draft community, as fans, as so-called draft experts because they didn't address needs. Well, which one is it? 
you know, sometimes, like I've said, I've always believed kind of in a blending and a hybrid of best player available at a position of need. Now, when you look at the Colts draft in terms of day two and day three, they definitely set about filling some needs, going after Dewan Smith, the corner from Florida Atlantic, Henry Anderson, the defensive end from Stanford, Clayton Gathers, the safety from Central Florida, David Perry, another defensive lineman from Stanford. I mean, they set about through the rest of the draft addressing some needs um, and, and got good value with some of those picks as well. So I don't think they did a terrible job there. In terms of their best pick of this draft, I will say I do like Dewan Smith, the corner from Florida Atlantic. I think he's a guy that has number two corner potential at the NFL level. And the fact is the Colts were able to peel back out of the late second round and still get him in the early portion of the third round. I thought that was a pretty good uh, utilization of the draft process and maneuvering on the draft board by general manager Ryan Grigson and his staff. I thought that was well done. And like I said, I like Smith. He's a guy that can come and contribute immediately and eventually to develop into a number two starter type in the NFL. In terms of guys that I think could surprise, there's a couple of them in the middle of this draft. Henry Anderson from Stanford is a guy I really, really like. And I almost said he would have been the best pick for this team. I think he's a guy that's a year one starter as a five technique in the Colts 3-4 defense. And that was something that they need. They needed some more competent defensive linemen next to Arthur Jones. And I think they got one in Henry Anderson, a perfect schematic fit. And a guy that many people would have argued they were surprised he didn't go at the end of round number two. I thought he was almost a steal here. And I look at Clayton Gathers, too, from Central Florida. You know, the Colts had a need at safety. He comes from a really good bloodline. I think he's had like four or five family members uh, play in the NFL. So there's some bloodlines there. He's a guy that I kind of liked on film. You know, thought he was a decent pick there in round number four and a guy that, again, could contribute right away. Uh, in terms of this draft, the biggest thing I would second guess is probably the selection of Philip Dorsett. Now, like I said, I don't necessarily fully agree with some Colts fans wanting to, you know, jump off the bridge with their anger at this pick, because I get it and I understand it to a degree, the pick. I also understand why fans will be frustrated because the defensive needs seem to be so massive and so mighty. Why would you spend a first round pick on a luxury talent? Well, what are ways to help your defense? Score more points, keep your offense on the field longer. You know, sit there as well and improve your special teams and affect positively your team's control of field position. Well, those are all things that Philip Dorsett can do. Sometimes the best way to help your defense is by helping your offense. And a perfect example of that would be the Dallas Cowboys in 2014. They spent a first round pick on Zach Martin. DeMarco Murray had a monster year. And what did that do? That allowed the Cowboys to control the game and the tempo. They consistently won the time of possession battle and kept their defense off of the field. And the Cowboys' defense, as a result, with less pressure on them and less energy having to be expended, they were, as a byproduct, as a result, better. And maybe the Colts are looking at that as a way to make their team better, and in particular their defense better in 2015. It just... To me, like I said, I liked Dorsett a lot as a prospect. I thought he was a solid, you know, top 40, top 45 guy. I'm just not sure if he was the best receiver that they could have taken there with pick number 29. So that, as much as anything else, is my question. It's not so much just that they took Dorsett. It was the fact, or a wide receiver there, it was the fact that they took Dorsett when I thought there was a wide receiver or two on the board that was better. Overall, I'll give the Colts like a C grade for this draft. I still like Philip Dorsett a lot as a prospect. I thought they got some really good value in guys like Smith and Anderson. I think they've got some other potential long-term contributors in guys like Gathers and Perry and even six-round picks like Herrera, the inside line back from Georgia, and the little bowling ball Josh Robinson from Mississippi State. It was a, a solid draft for the Colts. You know, a couple of these guys will develop into starters, which is which is a good performance considering the position the Colts found themselves in in this draft.